do some coaching. Get ready, boys. It's a coaching lesson starting now. What's up? What's up, bro? What up? Nothing much. Yeah, um, I'm still feeling... I have exactly what you have. Or had, more like, but I'm still feeling it from two weeks ago. Yeah. Just... Every, every snake I eat is another mucus line in my throat. <laughs> These fucking snakes. Yeah. Right. I had to uh, answer customer service phone calls while having it blow my nose. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, what's it called? I got two replays um, I want to go over. Okay. Let's do so this. Let's get the stream real quickly. Um... I'm really doing the uh, Ling Hydra into uh, Brood Infestors into Broodlord for Protoss. Um, however, this one, this one, I think I just didn't transition fast enough to Hive Tech. But there's probably some other base, uh, massive problems. Okay. Let's see. Ah. Let's see what the dealio is. <coughs> All right. So your first mistake is you pick Protoss. Oh wait, that's not you. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Nope. Uh, all right. I would never betray this one. <laughs> all right. Um, this looks like. Yeah, it's good. To open so far, opener wise, it's fine. Totally fine. Um, build like yours. Is... Uh, what up? Go ahead. Um, I'm having issues with my queen timings. Like it seems really spread out between the first, the uh, my uh, main queen and my natural queen. Uh, is it just me making too many drones, or should I bank up for them? Uh, or should I just continuously pulse. make drones? If you're going for like 17 hatch and then immediately after like a pool, your queens are always going to be off timed because the pool finishes faster than the hatchery does. So the, the, the queen of the middle start just before the queen of the natural is even done, but not by too much time. Um, it doesn't really matter, though. Uh, like, um, if they're off by, like, let's say 10 seconds or something, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Just as long as, if, if it fucks really, if it really fucks with your injecting, though, if you're like, oh, man, I can't inject like this, this is too much. Uh, <coughs> one way yeah, you can fix that, what, one way you can fix that is just make an extra drone. Before you make your pool, okay. and then it'll make your pool be about like the trade-off would be you get another drone first before the pool, which is fine. Uh, but your pool would be probably like five seconds later, and it would make your queens more timed like perfectly together. Okay, yeah, because in the early game, uh, my micro macro cycle with the injects is kind of off and, until I get a fourth queen for creep spread. Uh, spread. Yeah, that's when it usually gets back on track. It's all good. You just make your pool like oh, basically do this: seventeen hatch, eighteen pool, nineteen hatch. Okay. So you'll go seventeen pool, and then or sorry, seventeen hatch. You'll lose a drone because you built the hatchery. You'd make two drones instead of just one, and now you'll go eighteen pool, and then you'll make two drones again, and you'll make another hatchery. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So let's look at some more action. Alright, so... I'm gonna pause it again really quick. Seeing that he's a double gateway opener, you've scouted it. Not making any links is a bit scary. I, mean, I do see you have an overlord here, which is nice. But, uh... If the Protoss somehow ran around, the, I really it's, it would be really rare. <coughs> but if the Protoss somehow ran around it, like the top of it, like up here or something, you would actually take a shitload of damage. My big recommendation would be if you ever scout a Protoss going double gateway like this, make like 10 links. Uh, even if they don't make Adepts attack you right away, it's a good habit to have because if Protosses who will attack you will fucking own you. They will like just destroy you. Yeah, I was board banking on the fact that... Um of waiting until I get my roaches out, but yeah, I kind of play a little it'll, bit. It'll, yeah, that. the timing of the adepts let you wait before roaches, if he does it with his first two, or like first four, out of a double gateway opener. Because that's really early double gate. This guy is crazy for opening like that and not attacking you. Yeah. Which is, I'm kind of shocked that I lost this game genuinely because he wasn't that good. It's just, I think he was, the main reason was a, uh, What's it called? Um, an engagement at the end, but it's just I couldn't throughout the game. I couldn't break them. I had the advantage the whole time, and I just could not break them. Okay. So I don't know if it was my unicom. Sorry about that. Dude. No, it's I don't okay. Know if it was my unicom or whether uh, the 
the strategy or something, I just couldn't break them. Well, your economy so far, you, you were pretty fucking greedy because you didn't make wins, and it's it's paid off pretty well because you uh, you're already fully saturated at 4 minutes and 30 seconds on minerals, which is really, really, really good. That's really fast. That's about the best that you could ask for. Uh, we'll see how much the Oracle does, I guess. <coughs> if that ever, okay. If that ever happens, it's actually always a good idea to run opposite from where the Oracle is with your drones. Okay. Because I know you'll lose mining time, but you'll only lose like half the amount of drones that you would lose otherwise. So it's like, even though you lose mining time, you're not letting like, instead of letting like eight drones die, you only let like four drones die. Because it takes the Oracle longer to like attack, move, attack, move, and it's much harder to focus fire that. And if the Protoss isn't good, he might actually fuck up focus firing altogether and kill like almost no drones. Because he has to focus fire, because uh, if he doesn't, it'll hit the Queen. Yeah, still a little bit of fuck up, but couldn't hit him. Um, yeah, I was real. I was more distracted of getting the spores up rather than pulling my drones uh, for initially. So I'll switch that up. You can definitely make the spores, but definitely pull your drones, just like a little bit. Yeah, pull the drones first and make the spores. Also, ideally too. I'll just because of what you just said, I want to just give you a tip. Uh, uh -huh. Stack your overlord. Or, uh, like, uh, set up your first overlord, for instance, like, right here. Like, you can, like, uh, scout there, and then move it around the side, down to the side of the main. And you can have a second overlord back here. And then you can have a third overlord where your one in the middle is right now, on the high ground between the bases. And you want to sack an overlord by, like, 340 or so, or, like, 345. Somewhere that's, like, start moving it in around that time, so the overlord will get in the base and scout the base by, like, 4.30. Like, it'll scout the majority of the base by, like, 4.30. And if you did do that, you would have seen the Stargate. And you would have not had to be like, oh, shit, an Oracle, and my drones are dying. You would have already had spores before yeah, the Oracle got there. I still have an issue with playing blind and not uh, <coughs> uh, Overlord in. Yeah, it's all good. So. Just, uh, yeah, but around, like, 3.45, send an Overlord in. On every map. <laughs> if you can. I like that you're taking a fourth base. It's good. I also like that you're going rage first on Hydras. It's important. That's really good. Oh, so far, overall, you're playing pretty well. Yeah, I, I did think I did this moderately well. It's just I couldn't figure out how to break them. I went from every angle and I just couldn't break them. I'm just gonna pause it really quick one more time and say something. I just to make sure you know this. The way your build opened, make sure you never do it this way against someone who hasn't taken a third. Never take Hydras this fast against someone who has not taken a third. Because okay. if he does, if he doesn't take a third, and let's say he was going for a two base adept all in, you would totally die if you did this. So you only have four roaches. roaches. Mass roaches. Yeah, you make more roaches basically. Okay. Uh, would be like, but the, you could make Hydras eventually, but definitely start making more roaches initially because if he show, if he just walks up with like a shitload of adepts, you'll totally die. Because he'll phase in all the adepts, and you'll just lose the fight. Or he'll now, phase in all the hydras, sorry. Right, go ahead. Um, what's it called? Uh, when they do the two base adept all in, but then they uh, they initially do the adept harass, they run that around for a little bit, and then they uh, uh, follow it up with a mortal uh, sentry with a shit ton of adepts. Can mass uh, roaches... Um, deal with that probably because yeah. I would you I'm a pretty greedy player so I would probably still be droning and have very minimal roaches that's <coughs> that. if you saturate every gas and every mineral line and you have like his army supply is like 40 and your army supply is like 10 when he gets there uh -huh. you might die that's that's a yeah. bit too greedy uh, you shouldn't be saturating everything if he doesn't have a third you should be scouting him and knowing what he's, he's coming to you and trying to make an army accordingly to whatever you're going to deal with but just generally speaking, rushing Hydras against a two base all in is a bad idea. Okay. Because it's they're they're really good when they're able to sit behind something, but they're not very good when they just get sat on straight up. So they'll die really fast if that's all you have is like, oh, I have ten Hydras, and now they're dead. Yeah. Because okay. because you can't kite a, a phased adept as it's invulnerable, so yeah, yeah, that's why I was just gonna die. Yeah. All right. So, but it gets three base. You can, you can totally do what you did. It's fine. Just I, I just want to make sure you know the difference. Yeah, I didn't know that. I kind of, um, I would have gone Hydra, so that's why I've been doing, I did that a couple times, you can say. I lived, but barely. Yeah, you, you, could, you could win, but if the Protoss mic goes correctly, you should die.
so like right now I like that you're moving out uh, I would one thing I would say uh, if you're gonna do styles like this against Brodos uh -huh. as soon as you start level 2 weapons all in rage and melee start an infestation pit at the same time and get ready to go hive yeah. So that you was can... the one thing okay. about this game. I kind of went really late high. Alright. I'm just going to slow down watch the micro. So, one thing I'll say, uh, first thing you should do against someone who goes for armies like this, where part of their army is melee and part of their army is range, is you should stutter step backwards. Always stutter step backwards against armies like that, because what will happen is his range will not do any damage while you're killing his melee. And then by the time his melee is gone, his range has only hit you maybe a couple times, because you're kiting it. And then now, yeah. if, if you retain a lot more hydras by the time the melee dies, you'll overpower his range really fucking hard. Okay. <laughs> so just kite things like zealots, just but like just stutter stuff it. So like back up attack, back up attack, back up attack, like that right there. But do it earlier. Yeah, I was really trying to get the nexus down. Um, it's too greedy. So yeah, because if you're trying to get the nexus down, if you're trying to get the nexus down, you should have just focused fired it straight up. But you ended up fighting the zealots anyways, so definitely just uh, just kind of. Now, since I kind of knew he was going this charge on arc on the mortal style for the zombie toss, would a few roaches, or should I add a few more roaches on to just buffer for the hydras, or just catch you could, the hydra? Uh, you could do that as long as the arc on mortal count stays kind of low. But if the arc on mortal count starts getting really high, you're gonna lose the game if you go roach hydra, because your roach line is gonna get just fucking demolished, and then uh, your back line will die as well. So <coughs> Uh, yeah, it would be fine. Okay. I would say, against an army like this, you should always start a hive and a spire. And get a get a greater spire, just as like a backup oh shit plan for broodlords. Because if he has like 12 archons and 12 immortals, and you're just trying to fight it with hydras and show the ground, you're gonna fucking have a hard time. You're probably gonna lose. Yeah. But broodlords just destroys that. The bigger the archon and mortal count gets, the better broodlords are. Yeah, like I said, I just went for it way too late. Uh, that's probably why I didn't break it. You would have seriously won the game, though, if you would have kited the Zealots earlier. You would have overpowered his army. And if you overpower the Archon of Mortal Count one time, you win the game against this kind of style. Because if you killed off all the Archons, that is so fucking expensive to replace that. And if you killed off all the Immortals, it not only is that expensive, but it takes a long time for him to make those, because he has to make them out of Robo instead of uh, Rookie. So it's just simple engagement stuff at all. Kind of, yeah. Like right now you're fighting again, you should be kiting. Uh, you went in way too deep right there. Uh, you let you like used his units against you better for him because you ran into the zealot line to try and have a good concave for yourself. But in reality he has to engage you as well because you have superior range units. So if he doesn't engage you, you're just picking apart at his army. So you running in is pointless. It's actually just fucking you over. Yeah, I'm still not, uh, I still need to get used to use the, uh, Hydra range, um, at its full power. Yeah, it's all good. <coughs> what you're doing it can work. Uh, you're just, like, hitting him over the head again and again. You're trying to, like, break him down. Uh... But, yeah, you have to definitely like, have a good engagement, or else it's gonna, the style will lose all the time. Because it, if you don't have good engagements, you're just giving it more money, basically. Like, you're, you're training inefficiently. It doesn't matter how much of an economy I have, and whether, but if I'm just throwing everything away, kind of just, it's pointless. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something as well, a tip. Uh... Okay, so uh, on the infestation pit, if you want to time it to where you get pathogen glands, and then you also get infestors with energy, don't make the infestors until the pathogen gland upgrade is at 21 seconds or longer, 
or like 21 seconds or above. If you make it before okay. that, your investors will spawn without pathogen glands. And this game, they spawned like just before it. Like they spawned about five seconds before, or ten seconds before. Game resumed. Oh. So like in this situation where you're in right now, where you're on a kind of a low tech army, Ling's are really shitty to have in your army in game types of fights because they're really low tech. Uh, what I would recommend you do, <coughs> sorry, I'd recommend you do something like uh, <coughs> send over like ten hydras and maybe like the majority of your Ling's or all of your Ling's to like the fucking top base. Um, yeah, at his third or something, do and do a run by, and then th if he moves out of position, take advantage of that. If he doesn't move out of position, fight him, because your main army fungal growth replaces the the purpose of zergling. The purpose of zergling is to make him not attack you. Obviously, lings are not going to run in there and do any fucking damage. They're just going to run into archons and to get bitch slapped in the face. They're just going to yeah. die. But if you have fungal and you hold him down with fungal growth, it's the same thing that lings do. But the links are redundant in this fight, and they don't need to, they don't they're not needed here. Basically, they're just like going to be a waste of supply. So you can if you with your current army, what I have, what I would say is just definitely just like counterattack against an archon style RB. You never want to be making links against archons. It's oh, like especially a lot of archons. Yeah, I was just going really like against this. Uh, I'm trying to talk, sorry, but like my face is so fucking congested. No worries, no worries. Uh, like right now, if you were to do, let's say, two fungal growths, two fungal growths on like the two archons on the left, and two fungal growths on the, or sorry, a fungal on both the archons on the left and the right, just like a spread fungal, two two fungals though on the front line of his army, and then you engage that, like like max range for hydras. Uh -huh. <coughs> you would fucking wreck his army right now. Just as, do you see what I mean, though? Yeah, I okay. think I do do it. It's just I don't know. Okay, we'll see. Like it's I keep doing bad trades or just where I destroy his army, he destroys most of my army, and then I just try to get uh, remax and then push again. Yeah. Kind of beating over the head. Kind of That's not bad. You're trading better than him this fight. Those movements that you're doing though are bad. Every time you Just move your army in, yeah, let it fire. Uh, okay. Because you ha you actually, almost what I would say is you should actually be backing up. Like, after the Archons are all dead, if he wants to run away, chase him and fungle him and then kill his shit. But if you back up just slightly, you actually will have a superior concave near the watchtower. See how there's a big open area right there on the side? Yeah. And then you have the bottom of the ramp as well below your army. Like, you'd have a huge fucking concave against his little concave. That would be much better for you than just... Because when you run in like that, what you're doing is you're allowing him to get one wave of free shots on you every time. Because Hydra's attack really fast, so every time you're moving around like that, you're wasting their attack time. Uh, if, especially if you're moving in forward. It's not bad to kite away from someone doing that, because you're not taking damage while doing it. But if you're kiting into somebody, and moving, attacking, moving, attacking, yeah, you're, you're basically making your, your own army take more damage. And your army's going to die faster that way. And also, you shouldn't focus fire, uh, like this. Like, when it gets smaller, that's fine, but yeah, the concave is the, the bigger deal here. It's just one of those instances where uh, over microwing is fucking you over. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, just keep in mind as well. Anytime you ever, this is the big, the big thing that will make your life so much fucking easier, is uh, whenever you see someone going Archon Immortal, just in the back of your mind go, I should probably eventually go Broodlord because they're really good against this, and if I don't break him early on. Go Breedlord. 
Because you'll just fucking break him guaranteed then at that point. Yeah, I just had tunnel vision thinking Hydra, Infestor, Ling can break him. Yeah. And if I just, I had a great economy, if I could just beat him over the head, then I could finish the game. Because you, you could have won. I went high way too late. Yeah, yeah. you could have won a few times throughout this game. You could have won the fight that is third, and you actually could have probably won again with the fight you just had a second ago. You kind of just micro the Hydras a bit poorly. But right now, what the, the storm upgrade he's getting, that makes your army not winnable anymore. Like, you're going to just die now if you stay on this army, this tech, when he gets that. Because your Lings and your Hydras are all going to just fucking evaporate to storms. And you actually have to move that regardless, and while you're moving around, he's doing more damage to you with his army for free. It's gonna just be very bad. <coughs> you could win the game right now again. You could totally win the game right now. If all you do right now is, uh... To be honest, the fungal I would have gone for would have been behind the Zealots on the, uh... The Archons and the Immortals in the back. That way your Hydras and your Bailings could have just wiped out all the all the Zealots straight up, like, fucking instantly. Yeah. And then you just overpower the Archon Immortal behind it, which would be totally fine. Especially if you're fumbling the Archons, they can't actually shoot you off of Google. So you're just killing Archons for free. And they're, they're the things that are taking for the Immortals as well. If you actually won this fight, before Sword came out, you would win. Just saying that right now. But the best thing you could do right here would be just to literally A-move your army... And maybe spread out your hydras in the middle just a little bit, like move them to the side so your bailings can actually get through and hit the zealots. That's about the only way I would micro this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I need my favorite things on the Oh no, it was the back hydras that weren't firing on the archons. <coughs> so, like, the warp is gonna fuck you. Uh, You'll have to yeah. back up. That was like a last ditch kind of thing. It was still a good fight overall. Like, he still traded pretty decent. His Archon Immortal Count is getting really low now, too. So this is when I would say you could totally... If you have more money, you could start overpowering him. Like, if you if you could just keep it up, basically. Because if you keep, if you keep resetting his Archon Immortal Count, your army becomes strong again. Yeah. But yeah, the Storm is definitely going to be a problem. If it, when it, that actually comes out. Even if he doesn't have Archon Immortal, if he just has Storm, that actually counters Link Bane, Hydra. Pretty hard. Like, he could just go fucking mass Stalker Storm and kill you with that army, basically. Yeah, that does happen in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, once again, just Broodlords. That's the, the big story of the game here is Broodlords. Because you could go Lurkers too, but I don't really like Lurkers that much, in the sense that he could actually run you over still. Yeah, it's still all or nothing on that. Because his Immortal count is pretty big. So yeah, exactly. He had like 8 Immortals at one point. So basically it was just micro and everything, my macro and everything looked pretty good. Your macro overall looked pretty fine, yeah. I don't really have a problem with your macro. You saturated very fast, and you upgraded well. It's just a yeah, your unit control was the problem. <coughs> and your, uh, your, your tech choices. You just, yeah. The storms, oh my god. You just stayed on the tech for too long. You, you turned it into an all-in for yourself. Ooh, 16 minute greater spider. <laughs> At least you're getting it. That's important. You know what makes me really mad is if I would have made my brood lords about, say, like, behind my mineral line and not in front of it, I would have won. Yeah, probably. Because it comes, like, within seconds of winning yeah. and you'll see it. Yeah. You would have you would have lost the base, but you would have pushed his army back, guaranteed. Yep. <coughs> So just transition faster off of it. Maybe yeah. Now yeah. against uh, Zerg is pretty much uh, Hydra being 
Viper against say against Mac, is that just gonna be the end game? Uh, because they, if they're going Mac, they're gonna have Thor's and Broodlords really don't go that well against Thor's anymore. Or am uh, I wrong in that assumption? Uh, sorry, say that again. The fucking storms were like really loud. And against um. Against Terran versus Mac is Hydra. You for Protoss transition off Hydra Ling faster, obviously because the Brute Lords are still pretty powerful against Protoss. Yeah. However, against uh, Mech, the Thors now can uh, equal range Brute Lords. So is pretty much Hydra Ling and add in Vipers because it's Mech Terran. Is that going to be the end game comp or would still uh, the greater spy So you only go Hydra Ling if they're Siege Tank Thor, or like something Siege Tank. You don't make Lings if they're not Siege Tank. Links otherwise are pretty pointless. Uh, if they're, let's say the Terran is going mass, th like five Thors, mass tank, and uh, some fucking Viking, and some Hellions or something like that. Um, I would probably be like, yeah, let's make some Brute Lords, make a couple Viper, make some Hydra, and make, maybe, maybe, or if I have Brute Lords, you don't need Links, period. Let's just say that right now. Links are fucking redundant if you have Brute Lords. It's the same thing as if, like, Fungal and Links. Like, Links have a, yeah. they're sometimes good, but if there's something else that replaces them, they're shitty. Uh, <coughs> for army versus army purposes. Um, so if I have Lords, I will never make Lings in the fight. Uh, but yeah, if I have like no Brood Lords, if I'm just rocking a Hydra, Viper, Ling, I would I would rock that army against uh, Siege Tank based Mech, because then you would just make the Mech units shoot themselves. The Thor or the the tanks would shoot whatever the Lings are on and fucking wreck it yeah. because tanks hit so fucking hard. But let's say he's got like fifteen Thors. Uh, a few ravens and maybe maybe even Vikings as well for Brood Lawrence as just to make it even more and uh, like fucking um, bunch of hellbats or something just to be in the front line. Instead of going league against that, I would actually replace the supply of what leagues would be into investors. Then I would use Daryl Parasite. So I would I would like. You don't really want to rely on fungal because the Thor has seven range as well. So Thor versus Hydra, it will, the Thor will fucking two shot a Hydra, and it's the same range. So it doesn't matter if you're fungaling a Thor, but if you neural a few Thors, like even if it, he has fifteen Thors and you neural six of them, you're gonna make his own Thors fucking wreck his own Thors, and then your Hydras are just gonna be overpowering the remainder as well. Especially, it's always good to to neural the front line of Thor. So that your Hydras are only shooting like one or two that are still in the front line of the sides of the concave. But his own Thors are shooting his own Thors. Because his his front line is now your front line. And his back line, which are out of range of your Hydra, are getting shot by his own his front line of Thors. So it minimizes the damage his army can deal. Yeah, I never <coughs> um, And if you want Breedlords as well, you can totally do Breedlords too. Um... But yeah, Neuraling, Neuraling Thors is actually the best way you could deal with Mass Thor. And then any type of like Mass Air, Vipers are always good, Infestors are always good, because you can do Fungal, uh, Parasitic Bob combinations. Hydras are honestly better now against Ravens, though, than Corruptors. The fucking new Seeker Missile, you cannot avoid it with a Raven, or with a Corruptor. You literally cannot fly fast enough to get away from it. It will always detonate on your shit. And having to spread corruptors every single time you get a secret is a big pain in the ass. It, it's not fun. It's it's really hard to yeah, not take it's, it's too much damage. And then a lot of times, too, when you're too busy spreading, he's pushing forward, killing your other shit. So it's it's like a fucking horrible unit to go down against uh, against Raven based mech. And instead, Hydra kind of replaces the corruptors' job against Ravens. Okay. <coughs> it's a lot easier to spread out Hydra. Because they're already spread out on the ground because they're ground units, and you can just click the ones that are red and move them out of your army. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, I think I got uh, one more replay. Okay. Uh, then if we have time, find someone, I guess, or for Podoss or Terran. Sounds good. I'm going to uh, load the replay really quick, and I'm going to blow my nose really fast.
So this is uh, against Beck, you said? No, oh, no, this is... Oh, it's Protoss. Okay. The only mech I've really played uh, was... Eh, yeah, let's, I'll, let me go load that one up. It was against a Gold Leaguer, and I still won, but I just... It was very close, and it's just horrendous I played, so let me go load that one up instead. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Is it too late to get an SC2? No, man. It's a perfect time. Do patch. Uh, where? Your background? Looks pretty good, dude. I like it. It's super greedy. Yeah, I've been really trying to focus on it uh, through the cycle. Tr uh, spending larva, injects, overlord spread, creep spread, etc. Yeah, it's very important. Because, uh, like, being able to do that, well, there's a lot of people who can't do that. Like, literally every game they'll play, they'll be like, fuck, my build sucks. It's so bad. I can't ever get my build right. But the fact that you're working on it already, and you're building that as, like, your core gameplay, that's really good. Because that's the hardest thing to do with this game, is to back row properly. Like, everyone can all in with a build if they learn how to do a build and do some fucking bullshit yeah. timing or something like that. But learning how to back row is, Yeah, right? But learning how to back row is uh, it's a skill that... It, it's like an acquired skill you have to work on over time. I think this is it. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. So... You'll probably recognize it when the game starts. Yeah, you know, as soon as the game starts, or as soon as we get in the loading screen, if the guy's not a gold leader, then it's strong game. Strong game. Okay. Okay, no, I think it's this game. I think this game will work too. Okay. I had it labeled as against Siege Shanks and Viper Problems, but yeah. Okay. Alright, let's see the build. I still like uh, severely experience myself. For a while, I was I was trying to go like just roach opening these gases, but I still find the uh, five minute build still okay. Just mass queens can hold off hellions and cyclones with uh, scout with uh, with links if you scout the hellions coming, um, and then you just transition and put uh, roach uh, so, into hydras and stuff. It'll work as long as they don't go double reactor factory. If they go double reactor factory, you will die. Guaranteed with if you just have links. Because there'll be too many hellbats to get a good surround. Oh hellbats, I didn't think of that. Because I've been i I've been faced uh Hellion timings with like probably like ten ish Hellions. Yeah. They never they never went to uh Hellbats. Yeah, if they go double reactor uh, factory, they'll have like four cyclones and like twelve hellbats and they're timing and you will die if you're just relying on links. It's really it like it's really early too, because it's double factory. 12 queens wouldn't hold it along with the links? No. The 12 queens would like pick apart the hellions a little bit, the hellbats, but cyclones kill queens so fucking fast. Uh, if they're able to just sit there and turret, the, the cyclones would wreck your army so fucking fast. It would not be good. Uh, yeah, I've been encountered that one double with the cyclones, more, uh, with hellbats on cyclones. Then. You need rushes or main links to deal with that. You could do it with Queens if he was really bad at micro, and he like, really made a lot of mistakes with it. But if he's good at it, he'll kill you. If you just have lead and Queen. Yeah, it's not good to just rely on your opponent sucking. So then, you're getting, uh, your ga when do you get two and three gas in your Roach Warrants? What timing? Um, okay. 
So right now, you should already have it. Uh, you should make a virtual one. It's similar to Protoss now. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm like trying to breathe here. So against Protoss, you do you do open gasless a lot uh, while you saturate really fucking hard. But against Terran, I would say take the Roach Warren at like 350 to 4 minutes. Try, try, try to take it around like 350. That would be good. And then around 350 as well, start mining gas again on your one gas that you already had. And then build like two more gases. So go up to three gases at that point. And that's when you would also probably make like 14 Zerglings or 16 Zerglings. And you could even include that into the four you already made early. So just, if you have four leagues already, just make 12 more or something like that and go up to like 16. That way, if he does like some Hillian pressure really fast with like the first two Hillians or the first four Hillians with like a medevac dropping in your bait or something, you could deal with it without losing a shitload of economy. It's just a safe way to play. Okay, so <coughs> 350, Roach Warn, two gas, or three gas, technically. Yeah. And then, uh... Make like, uh, make the, up to 16, yeah, up to 16 leagues. 16 leagues, and then, uh... Just uh, once the roach warren is uh, built, um, say, how many, would you say like four safety roaches? I would say like five. Uh, if he if he's not like really rushing to some fucking economy going, like if he doesn't have like a third that you see already, and he's it's kind of mysterious as to what he's doing, but you know he's going back. I would make probably like five roaches at that point. Okay. But for instance, if you don't scout him and you don't know what he's doing. If you make like five roaches and he's actually going like double port banshee, you just wasted larva on roaches that are going to do absolutely nothing. So you always want to try to get a scout regardless, just to have an idea of what's going on. But uh, with like what you've seen so far, I would make like five roaches because what this looks like is it looks like he's probably going to get an upgrade on that one factory, and he's going to probably go for. Uh, it could be tank because he has a tech lab, but it could also just be like more cyclone and hit a hill unit shit like that. And he might just want blue flame. Uh, <coughs> but he also has a Banshee, a uh, Starport, for the tech lab. That would make me go, okay, I'm going to have a little bit more queens than I normally do. Uh, instead of having, like, let's say, four creep spreaders. Also, I, I don't make mass queens anymore. That's something I don't do anymore. Uh, I, I just look at your queen pack. Um, I Nowadays, I, I would make what you have now and probably stop against someone who's going Banshee. Uh... Wait, you'd be totally fine then, but if he's going, um, if he's not going Benchy, I would probably make one queen per hatchery, and then I'd make like three max creep spreading queens. Okay. And then um, I would. All right, go ahead. Uh, after once at the three fifty mark, after the three gas, uh, first hundred gas is going into uh, lair. Uh yeah. Or lair. L lair. Or lair waits. Okay. Lair. And then immediate upgrades once lair finishes. Oh, uh, for, are you talking roaches here? So what kind of style? Okay, so I actually, I, I would recommend not going mass roaches against mech anymore. I've kind of changed my mind over the past day that I played. Uh, making safety roaches early is nice, because you need it, otherwise you might die, depending on what you're fighting. But, when you get to layer tech, I actually prefer, yeah, I actually prefer hydras now. And you can also even use, uh, you can try messing around with uh, Swarmost if you want to. You never want to make a lot of them. You want to make like six to eight, and that's it. You're good. And then all that's going to be for is for like harassing purposes. Like you could run them over here, on the map, and fly them into the national or something like that, and just do damage. Um, I tried swarm host. It's not me. It's not meant for me. I don't know if it's just my lack of experience with the unit, but it's hard for me. So to you do. don't have to do it. I'd rather spend the gas into an infestation pit and get high with for vipers. That's fine. Yeah, you don't have you don't have to go swarm most. It's totally fine. But I would say definitely uh, make the safety roaches, the safety links early to saturate properly without taking a risk of dying. And then once you're fully saturated, then just literally go like mass hydros for a bit and rush. Uh, get an infestation pit anyways, and you can go hive with that. And like you said, you can go viper. Viper is amazing. They get the thing go tank styles. Yep. Uh, <coughs> if they go for a really heavy Thor style. Infester would be amazing. Yep, for the middle. Yep, and then uh, just Ling Hydra in general is good. Like, yo, before you max out, always make wings no matter what with your excess minerals. If you just need to make more army and you don't want to spend any, you don't have any gas to spare, just add wings no matter what. It's totally fine. 
But when you max out, that's what I would say. Leagues become less relevant unless you're going to be doing like run buys into someone's mineral line or trying to kill a base somewhere. Leagues in your army at in game when you're 200 supply and then kind of suck, depending on what you're fighting. Like if you're fighting Mass Thor, Hellbat, I would never say make sure 30 army supply is in Leagues because it's going to run in and die and do absolutely nothing. And it's like a waste of 30 supply, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, early before you max out, Leagues are totally fine because it just adds beefiness to your Hydra army behind it because it buys them time before they start taking damage yeah. well that's what I always thought <coughs> unit comp I've been going with against mech is just lean Hydra um, and then get to quick hive tech with four vipers and then that usually would end it I haven't yeah. really gone into good lords or ultras because ultras got nerfed and good lords or thors got uh, buffed yeah because with the old meta Back in the test map, a lot of Terrans were actually going Hellbat Cyclone all day. Like, they would just go Hellbat Cyclone every game. Roaches were amazing against that, because you, especially if you got Burrow move, you could just go underneath the Cyclones, up Burrow, and then kill a shitload of them. But nowadays, that's not really as common anymore. It still happens sometimes, but you see way more tank-based builds. And Roaches against tank-based builds are fucking terrible. Like, your Roaches get two-shot by a tank if he has any upgrades at all, which he will at some point. <coughs> so roaches just get fucking wrecked. It's not good. So yeah, Link Hedge is way better. <coughs> also, uh, if you ever scout... I don't... I'm gonna back it up, because I don't want to say something if you did it. Yeah, let me, let's see I what happens. I don't think I scouted the Banshees. You did scout the Tech Lab and the Starport, though. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't know, like, I, I mean, the times I do scout and I don't play blind is... I don't know what I'm seeing. As, uh, versus a Terran or a Protoss. Except for, like, okay. Protoss, and I see mass gateways being made. Hey, there's probably an attack coming. Or I see, um, about 16 Marines and two Medivacs. Okay, there's gonna be a drop. But when I see factories and Starports in between the Reactors and Tech Labs, I'm not too knowledgeable about what's coming my way. Okay, so yeah, like, looking at his base right now, this is before you've been attacked. You would have no idea what was possible out of this? I would uh, presume there's either Medivacs or there's going to be a Liberator. That's what I would presume. Okay, so... I would not think Banshees. Uh, it, a Liberator and a Medivac don't require a Tech Lab to make. It, you can make that with just straight-up basic Starport, and you could also make it with uh, a Reactor. Uh, the only thing that you need to make with a tech lab is a banshee and a, fa and a, a banshee, a raven, and a battlecruiser, and you, you can almost rule out, you can almost guaranteed rule out that it's going to be a liberator because uh, you could be thinking to yourself, oh well, he might be getting the liberator range upgrade because that that does require a fusion core to get that, so you have to go starport and then fusion core. You got to basically get battlecruiser tech to get the liberator upgrade, but you can kind of rule that out because. Uh, of how greedy he's playing. Uh, if you like, were to see the third base, you could immediately go, okay, he's being greedy. He's not teching super hard. Um, <coughs> so, one big thing you should always look for is definitely the amount of bases the Terran has. Like, you should always... You can assume he's expanded, for sure, but you should always just guarantee it, like, confirm it, and just pop it over Lord in and go scout. Oh, look, he's got a natural. I see a command center. But the more economy he has, the earlier he has it, the less likely he's teching super fucking hard. And going up to Fusion Core tech for Liberator tech is really expensive. Okay. Uh, so you can basically rule that out with how much economy he has. And you can rule out the band, the, the medevac 100%. If he has a tech lab on a, on a starport, never, ever, ever expect a medevac. It's never going to happen. It's always going to be a Banshee uh, when it's like this. Because there's no point to really get a medevac upgrade. Especially, for one, if he's going mech, there's no point to get medevac upgrade at all. And, uh... Um, the other one is... No one's ever gonna rush a medevac upgrade. Because the, the medevac upgrade's kind of like, meh. You could literally play an entire game without it and be totally fine. Uh, is it just a speed boost? It makes the fucking speed boost last a little bit longer. Okay. The, the bigger thing Terrans want, though, is, like, multiple medevacs. That's definitely... If they're going to be doing some type of medevac shit, they want multiple medevacs. And also, medevacs are going to just be less common in general, because now you can't pick up tanks anymore. So if they're not going bio, you can almost safely say you're never going to see a medevac, period, all game. 
unless it's going to be like p- to pick up four Hillians in your main. But if you think about that, think about it like this too. Let me just say one more thing. <coughs> Let's just say if there was a medevac on the map, you already have it covered. Because what would that do? It would be dropping like four Hellions into your base, and you already have creep in your base, and you already have 16 links that can easily deny four Hellions. So you're totally covered from that regard. So the only th- if you re- if you think about all these things, it kind of rules everything out, and the only thing that's really a possibility now is Banshee. So th- okay. simply put, basically, if you ever see a Terry with a tech lab on a starport, just make spores. Banshees. Because it's gonna be Banshees. Okay. The only time it will never be the only time it will not be Banshees is if he's like one base fusion core rushing and he's gonna rush Liberator Range or something like that. And that's really rare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 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 like a super commitment. It'd be like you going like fucking one base brood lord. That works definitely. <laughs> But yeah, if you had Banshees, no. or if you had Spores, you would take no damage from this, and you would be totally good. But go ahead, what are you going to say? Uh, with React, or with Tech, uh, with tech Lab Factories, is it, just, uh, is it going to be just most likely uh, Blue Flames, or...? So, with how he has it set up, how he has three fa- or two Factories, one has a Reactor, I would be thinking right now, it could be any of the combination of Mass Hellion with Blue Flame, it could be Hellions with uh, Tanks, it could even be for a fucking Thor with... Like, the, the tech lab on a factory, the only thing that unlocks is a tank and a Thor. You can make everything else on a factory without a tech lab. So, you would assume he's probably either going to start making tanks and Thors eventually, because he has to, that's how Mech is played. Uh, the big thing about Mech is th- deciphering whether it's a Mech-based... Or, a, a, sorry, a Thor-based Mech or a tank-based Mech. Or a sky-based mech. There's three ways you can really play it. Is Sky- it too expensive for a Thor and Siege Shank, or...? No, it's just that it's really shitty to do both. Like, a lot of both. Because they're both really expensive in terms of supply. Uh, like, if you have fucking ten tanks and, like, five Thors, that in itself is, uh, that's like 60 supply right there. And if I'm going to, like, Broodlords, you're going to be, the Terran's going to be thinking to himself, fuck. I wish I didn't have these tanks. Whereas if I'm going roaches, he'll be like, fuck, I wish I didn't have these Thors. Like, he would rather have... Ta- like, Terrans are more like... Uh, Mass one units? Or yeah, well, they, they definitely want to, like, counter your composition. Which is the same thing you got to be doing is countering theirs. So if you see a Terran... Like, if a Terran's going middle of the road and everything, it's not going to be that hard to deal with it. Because uh, a middle of the road Terran, literally, again, it's the same thing as, like, Protoss when they go Archon Immortal, just make fucking Broodlords eventually, and you will win. Because there's not going to be enough shit that deals with Broodlord. It is, like, for instance, if your Broodling shoots, like, if he's got five Thors in the front line and ten tanks behind it, which is the same supply, and your Broodlord shoot a Thor with Broodlings, and now all of his tanks are, like, <laughs> just shooting the Thors, like the Broodlings off the Thors, every one of those Thors is going to die in fucking two seconds. Because the tanks are going to kill his own Thors so fast. So... Yeah. If you ever see a Terran going for, like, just every unit in the game, just make Brood Lords eventually. Right. But yeah, that's, yeah. Game yeah, I'm not sure <coughs> how to play Mac, uh, because pre, uh, pre-balance patch, no one ever did it. Yeah. Except for people like, uh, actually I won't mention its name. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, so like right now, all, all these queens you have, um, yeah, in my opinion, it's just a bit much nowadays. It was good against Bio, because they're, the main reason why you made so many queens before is to kill Metabax. They would take yeah. against the Marines and you would pick off Metabax, because that is your only form of anti-air. But nowadays, when you're going for Hydra-based styles, you don't need the queens for anti-air anymore, only early game. And if you have like six queens, or seven queens roaming, or if you have three, both of those numbers can still deny a Banshee, just fine. And yeah, there you go, he went Mass Hellions with Blue Flame so far. Uh, this is when the Roaches would be totally fun. like the safety Roaches would work great. 
Uh, and now you already... It's also kind of a late timing, so you already have a Hydra dead. But the big problem for you in this game is definitely your economy. You've lost uh, 11 drones already, and you're undersaturated oh, uh, still yeah. at 7 and a half minutes. So it's kind of late. Thank you for the sub. So, that Banshee just put me too far behind. Yeah, the, the Banshee definitely fucked you over quite a bit. You're actually behind in supply overall. The Queens also put you behind regardless as well. Like, you made so many of them, and they're really... When you're teching... Like, the reason why it also works when you go Mass Queens uh, with the uh, Link style is because you don't take all six gases, like, right away. You take delayed gases throughout the whole game. You you go off of minimal gas, because your main focus is Zergling and a little bit of Bailing. But with the style like Hydra, you need a lot of gas. So cranking out shit tons of Queens all game is... Tying up a lot of your minerals as well. Would you actually also need gas? Like this style will still work just fine against someone who goes bio, but you're, you are going to see a lot of mech nowadays. So I, I do like the league opener. I, I like the opener overall is literally just speed league expand. Don't fucking make thirty queens. Make like make like seven, and you're good. Uh, you have speed links, you're scouting. You should be scouting for something. Just something as simple as, Game are there factories or are there barracks in his base? That'll tell you if he's going mech or bio. And if he's... Sack and overlord for better information. Yeah, if, we, if you haven't seen anything enough yet with your first one, then yeah, definitely sack and overlord after that. But just knowing if he's going mech or bio is like half the battle right there. Because now... If he's going back, and you make a few roaches like you did, that's great. Because you're not going to die to fucking Hillians now. You're not going to die to some bullshit timing of, like, possible Hillian Cyclone, what, whatever. Like, the mech units early on, are you're going to die easily with roaches. Even if, even if you push that with, like, one tank, you would run that shit over with roaches. Uh, <coughs> roaches just keep you safe. A lot of times, the way... This is the way that Terrans play, okay? Oh my god, I can't breathe. Oh. Uh, sorry, if, if I sound like I'm getting really, like, heated when I'm talking, it's because I'm trying to fucking breathe no worries, while I'm talking. I know, I know how you feel. Uh, I know that if you go, if, you, if you're a Terran, okay, and you're going mech, the idea of mech generally is I'm going to harass your economy and try and slow you down by throwing my units away, but hopefully killing your economy and taking my own and oh, hoping to make you all in yeah. into my defense. Like, I want you to attack into my tank line because that would be fucking great for me. That's what a mech kind of wants to do. That's general. The general idea of mech is that. Hey, by the way, they commit the sound, man. Uh, the general idea of bio is not so much that, but instead is I want, I'm going to do a very heavy mobile pressure against you, and I want to kill as much as fucking possible with my pressure, and then I'm going to keep the pressure on with more and more and more medivacs until I break you down. So it's like bio is more hyper aggressive. Mech is more really defensive with light harass. That's like the difference in the playstyle you'll generally see. So making a little bit of roaches definitely keeps you safe early game. It's like it's like a great fucking transition out for the the links early keep you safe from like really fast hellions. Into roaches keeps you safe from more hellions and potential other bullshit that can hit you early game. Into hydras, which now deals with everything in the mid game. And then from the mid game you could go to whatever the fuck you want. You can be like, okay, now I want to add in some investors or some vipers or some broodlords or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Game resumed. So, recap a little bit. Limit the queens to, what, like, three or four uh, creep spreading? Uh, yeah, like, make like, make like seven queens in total. Have like... Okay, seven queens in total. Yeah, have like three, uh, like, have like four spreading at first, and three on the hatcheries. And then every time you take a base, just make one of those creep spreaders become a, a hatchery queen. Because you already have like 30 tours active on the map at that point. And then uh, <coughs> roach horn uh, along with two extra gas, and then re put three drones on the gas. So and then first hundred gas into layer, and then five safety roaches, and then just second overlord at three fifty as well, and see what he has. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, just again, Ling Hydro works totally fine until you're maxed out, and then it kind of comes down to what am I playing against and what would work best. And again, the, the big ones are 
Sky Terran, Investor, Viper. Hydra fucking owns that. Uh, against mech, like ground mech, uh, Thor based armies, Investor, and Hydra. And maybe against some Brood Lords. Would wreck that. Because you would just rely on Neural Parasite. And against like Siege Tank based armies. Like, keep in mind, Brood Lords should always be your in game goal. If you can kill them before that, great. But they should always have a goal to eventually get Broodlords, because if you ever try to fight mech without Broodlords and they're maxed out, you're going to have a fucking hard time. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And, um, with Sea Shanks just Viper Hydra? Yeah. The, basic, the best army you can go for it, because you're not gonna, you're not playing against like pro gamers, you're not playing these super high level like people that are going to be like, transitioning to all this other bullshit. If you just go Hydra, Broodlord, and Fester Viper every game, you will win a fucking shitload of your bet games. Okay. And just now, do I just want to? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> sorry. I was just... One last thing. And just focus on creep spreading. Try not to ever fight off creep. Versing mech is a really slow paced game. If you can kill a base like you just did just now in this game, that's great. But try not to take fights against mech unless you're like really stabilized. And one of the best ways you can also play against mech to make it really hard for him to kill you is as you push the creep and you're really rich, and you have a lot of money, build static defense and push it with your Broodlords, and push it with your Hydras. Like, build, like, fucking, uh, like, 15 Spore Crawlers, and maybe, like, 5 Spines, if you really want to. You don't really need Spines, though. Spines are kind of, like, meh. You really want Spores instead, because you want to have detection in case he goes for Ghosts to try and EMP your casters, uh, and you also want something that will deter the Vikings and the Ravens. And just, it also adds meat to your army, because there will be some Thors that'll be like shooting fucking spore crawlers when they're trying to attack, like a move forward, and it's wasting the Terran's time and not killing more of your Hydras and your Brood Lords potentially. Yeah, yeah like right now, uh, this army, you could beat it with Hydra Viper. Uh, if you just blinding cloud like that clump of tanks, you could actually kill this army. Which is what I would say to go for first. Uh, going Brood Lord, like, see, you're doing the same thing again. Let me actually back it up. You did the same thing you did against Spread yeah, which is bad. You move in way too close with your Hydras. I'm still not used to that having that so, so much range on the Hydras. Yeah. Like right now, what I would say for you is literally just a move. And if you wanna if you wanna micro beyond this, I would say grab like green box the back line of your hydras and move them to the left so they fill in the gap that's in between the queens and the hydras right now. Just create a concave as fast as you can if you want to micro it and speed it up, but never fucking like walk into his army because you eliminate. It's like the, the hellbats are like zealots again and you're walking into melee range. <coughs> and it takes <coughs> sorry, it takes hydras time to kill this army too like. It's gonna take Hydras. If you just A move this right now and he A move towards you, these Hellbats would honestly, he has 10 of them. These Hellbats would live for probably a good 8 seconds before they're dead. They're like 7 seconds. Which is time that the tanks would have to move forward and then siege up, times that the Thor, time that the Thor would have to walk forward a little bit and then start firing. And if you actually just like kite it backwards, you would extend that time for the Thors and the tanks to actually catch up and do anything. And if then he backs up and pulls back, that's fine. You can just not engage anymore. And if you were to like unsiege again, you could redo this. Or you could wait until you have Viper until Bloody Cloud, the siege dump tanks, and you could just then pick apart the Hellbats back and forth until they're dead, and then you just like... I still would never recommend moving in like this that much to the the mech army. The, the only time I would... Okay, the only time I would say move in is if like, let's say this whole front big blob he has of Hellbat Thor. Let's say all the Hellbats are dead, all the Cyclones are dead, and there's only like two Thors left, but all the tanks are alive, and they're all blind currently in a blinding cloud. Uh, <coughs> and they're all sieged up. Now, let's say you don't have any energy left to the blinding cloud, and you only have about four seconds left before your existing blinding cloud fades off. Then I would say, okay, you should probably just move in really quickly and try to pick off everything and get all those tanks before they start firing and get rid of as many of them as possible. That would be fine. But other than a situation like that, moving in is totally shitty for the Hydras. Okay. So stop stutter stepping forward and uh, don't engage mech army. Let them engage you. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like, it's 
the efficiency right there of your hydras was super bad. Like you, you got rid of the hellbats, but you could have done, you could have got rid of the hellbats without losing your army. Like the only thing you accomplished there was literally killing hellbats. Yeah, he still has the tanks, which is the problem. Yeah, and the thors, and the thors just add meat to his army as well. Like he damaged a couple of the thors, but all four of them are still alive, and all six tanks are also still alive. But yeah, if the army starts getting kind of big, like if you're, we're talking like 160 or 170 supply or above, you should not engage him unless, and with ground-based armies, unless you have Viper or Broodlord. You need one or the other. Or, I guess if you have a front line of Lings and you think you can really get a good fight, you can try. But as soon as the Lings start getting thinned out, which is going to be pretty fucking fast, you need to back up. Because if you throw away, every army you throw away of just like, let's say you throw away three times the amount of resources as he does, every time you fight him because you're engaging into a sieged up line you're delaying the broodlord transition for yourself over and over because you have to then remake the hydra army and you don't want to be doing that you want to be you want to be teching to something stronger faster because you'll then trade more cost efficiently against his army i feel like my issue is just i'm too well, i'm too bloodthirsty Especially against uh, Mech. Sorry, Mech is, de is definitely a uh, gameplay of like, it's it's like a patience style of gameplay for sure. But I think when you start being more, um, more like, you know, uh, reliant on something like casters and broodlords, you'll start realizing like, holy shit, this is so fucking good and I don't know why I wasn't doing this the whole time. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to realize that. <coughs> <coughs> And like right now, the amount of queens you have is actually not bad if you had Broodlords to accompany them. If you actually had all these queens underneath like 10 Broodlords and you were just spamming Transfuse while your Hydra is following up the Broodlings and just killed shit, your army, and it, like let's say all his Vikings and all his Thors and Liberators, they're all trying to shoot the Broodlords, but the only thing you're micro is Transfuse, 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 Transfuse. You would probably win that fight. Yeah, like you can see right there too when you moved in like that. Uh, I'm just trying to get on top. Of no, I I understand. I, I totally understand. But think about it like this: this is the one. This is the one. I'm just trying to make you. I'm sure you already know because I'm not trying to like make you like. No, you're doing it wrong. I'm just trying to make sure you see the something you might not have thought about or you know just see the big picture here. Uh, your mindset right now is all right. I need to get the fuck all those tanks before they siege because he's unsieged right now and I could probably get a good trade. But watch the supply as he, you get on to it. We're going to watch this fight a couple times because I think it's a really good example. So move in. And he's you're both 200 before this fight started. And by the time the tanks are sieged, you were about tied. I would say you're both around like 175 to 180. But the second those tanks fucking start firing, your army just goes like... Just gets destroyed. It just drops. And you just remade a shitload of legs and some storm hosts. But you still overall lost, like, fucking probably, like, 80 supply right there, I would say. The leagues are a bit, uh, the, they're replenishing a little bit. But yeah, you you lost a lot of supply. He lost a bit. Like, just a few units. He lost probably a couple Thors, a couple tanks, and some Hellbats. Again, maybe a Liberator or something. But, now check this out. Take, look at the fight one more time. You can see how clumped up he is. Just imagine if you had two Viper... Just two Viper. And you blindly clouded the bottom clump of tanks and the top... Like, two cl two blinding clouds on the top part and the bottom part of that huge fucking clump of tanks. That's... How many tanks is this? Of that clump. That's fucking... Uh, that's 12 tanks. You would have 12 tanks. Or no, sorry, that's 11. There's one tank on the left. There's one tank on the left. So that'd be, that would be 11 tanks that are now taken out of the fight. And then you could easily just fucking wreck his army and... You're not getting shot by any of the tanks anymore. It, that that also <coughs> eliminates the purpose of you having to like dive, for instance, and be like fucking run in. Ah. Yeah. Because you don't even have to stop at two viper. You can have eight viper, and you can just literally every like four seconds, bloody cloud, bloody cloud. Four seconds later, bloody cloud, bloody cloud. Four seconds later, I'm able bloody cloud, bloody cloud. To blind clouds, correct? You're able to what? Sorry shoot into blinding clouds correct? you can yeah the only thing that blinding cloud does is if you are standing underneath it your unit now has one range 
That's it. But you can shoot anything underneath the body cloud totally fine. So what it does to tanks is it makes them completely useless because a tank cannot shoot something that's in melee range. A tank has a minimum range of like three. So if you if a tank is blind clouded, it literally can do nothing until the blind cloud's gone, or it has to unsiege and move. Okay. Alrighty. So stop diving in, stop stutter uh, stutter stepping, and I should be better. Yeah, there's sometimes in Star Stepping Forward are good. Like, for instance, if you're going up against, like, Blink Stalkers, and his idea is he wants to kite away from you, then Star Stepping Forward towards him is not a bad idea. But an army like Mech, he's not going to kite you. He's literally just going to be like, bring it on, bro. Sitting like, there. fucking, like, a brick wall. And he's going to just fight you straight up. And he will crush you if he has any type of a good composition. Like, about the only thing I would tell you to just fucking, like, dive into Mech with is if he was going, like, mess... Hellion Cyclone, and you had, like, a shitload of League Bane, or something like that, and you wanted to just wrap around him and blow him up with Bane Leagues. That would be great. But other than that, you don't really want to just dive into mech and just hope for the best, because you'll probably lose every fight. Yeah. But yeah, overall, yeah, you... Your macro, again, is not that bad. The the scouting and the uh, the unit control and the unit compositions, you know, is your big thing. And, uh, yeah, I feel like we talked about it a bit. Touched on some points. That's pretty good. Uh, do we still have uh, time for one game or no? Or yeah, yeah, we can do that. That's fine. I'm down. I don't mind. Uh, hopefully there's a Terran or a Protoss in the chat. All right. Likely, uh, Diamond? Or do you want some masters. Diamond or Masters? Okay. Yo, boys. If there is a Diamond or Masters Terran in the chat in the stream right now and you guys want to play a game for my coaching lesson that we're doing right now with Moist let me know in the stream so that I can tell you how to uh, join a chat so we can play I had to take my headset off for just one second oh. there we go chat if you join I love you long time All right. oh, you love you long time chat woo <clears throat> All right. Oh man. So how's your Thanksgiving, dude? Yeah, pretty great. Uh, slept in. Uh, mashed potatoes and turkeys are always uh, are always great. Yeah. Must suck for you being in Australia. Yeah, I don't get anything. I get to start over here. No one cares about my Thanksgiving. Yeah, but you get Starburst snake gummies. Yeah. That sounds pretty great. They're not bad. They're not bad. They're actually pretty good. No, oh. I just really want a fucking like honey smoked ham and some turkey and some potatoes, some mashed potatoes. That sounds fucking delicious. I'm sure you guys can go to, like the grocery store and then. A turkey here is that. so expensive and it's so small. Uh, that sucks. Like people were talking they about it before. Mix it up with like kangaroo meat or something. If they Gross. Have so dude, kangaroo meat is like leathery. It tastes gross. I'm not a fan. It's like really tough. Yeah. Have uh, you seen any huntsmen's or anything? Not this time. I've seen them before though. They're fucking huge. They're scary. Are they lethal or they uh, just no, kind of they're like not, they're not. long legs? They're not lethal. They're not poisonous. There are some other po spiders here though that are very poisonous, but uh, a huntsman's like just a just a big spider, and it can, a lot of people like them actually because they kill other bugs. So they're essentially a bigger version of a daddy long leg. Kind of, yeah. They can bite you though. They can fucking hurt when they bite you, but they won't kill you. They won't like poison you. Yeah, a little bite's not too bad. All right. Uh, I don't know if anyone's gonna enjoy. Yeah, it's kind of expected not to find a Terran or a Protoss in a Zerg stream. Yeah, I can play it myself if you want. It just, uh... Yeah, sure. Talk about it afterwards really fast. Yeah, that'll work. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> Any map you want to play specifically? Or you can, you can make the game. I don't mind. Just pick whatever map you want. Uh... And by the way, thank you everyone for supporting the stream throughout the coaching lesson. I'm not really, I'm trying not to talk too much about other uh, random shit. Low level masters, Terran. Is it? 
Hey, oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, SPK, <laughs> let's do this shit. All right, SPK. Follow these instructions. He said, guess not. No, we need you, bro. We need you. All right, follow these instructions, SPK. Log into StarCraft. Go to the group chat. When you're in groups, just hit the button that's fine at the bottom. This window will pop up. Once you're in this window, type in vibe. And then just hit enter, whatever. It works. Join the chat, the group chat called Vibes Raiders. Like that, right there. The top left one. Just double click it. Join chat. And then you'll be in the actual chat at the bottom. And then you can just type or whatever. And we'll invite you into the game once you're there. <coughs> if you need me to read tell you how to do it again, I don't mind. Just ask. Because I know you might not have been logged in when I explained it. Mm. But yeah, I just want to get fat today, man. I want to eat so much. Ugh. I mean, you're on you're on your way of doing it. You're eating Pringles and uh, Starburst, so... Dude, I want more. More, more like real food, not junk. I want pasta. Oh god, that would be good. I think that's yeah, that's him. There we go. <coughs> Alright. Good shit. Whatever you guys are ready. Go ahead. Okay. Pig bought 16 kilograms of meat for tomorrow. It can be your Thanksgiving. I'm just gonna cough he all over was, it. Ugh. What's up? He was a Masters uh, in 2013. It's all good. Let's see how this game goes. Oh, I'm the host. My bad. Shit. I thought you were the host. All right, good luck. Good luck. I'll let you play. Just uh, ask me questions if you have any throughout the game. And if I see you doing something wrong, I'll, I'll give you some advice. All right, stream. What up, guys? I'm going to... Uh, I muted my mic on Discord so I can talk to you guys again. Thank you everyone for uh, subbing and all that stuff and supporting the stream throughout the coaching lesson. Sorry I'm not really like talking about it a lot, but I am coaching someone right now, so I try not to really distract myself too much from the coaching lesson because they did buy, pay for it. Um, but yeah, yo, Mailman, once again, shout out to you, bro, for the 60, you're fucking boss. Zionism, thank you for the 25 bits, dude. ST Davis, what up, dude? Thank you for following. Welcome to the stream. And then Sunny Bro and Vitamus there, boys. Thank you for the subs, the resubs. What have you said? Uh, Sunny Bro says, Hey, Vibe, it's been a while. I'm down here in Korea right now. Oh, fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah, bro. That sounds good. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Thanks for the support, baby. What is Lily yelling about? I think she's playing a scary game or something. She's doing a drinking stream today, so she's going to be a bit. <laughs> How you doing, bro? I'm gonna go scare her after this coaching lesson's over. <laughs> oh, gross. My nose. Alright, so, so far. This build looks okay. So far, okay. <coughs> this guy's going double barracks. Well, that's interesting, because this is not back. It's okay. Now this is this is up to Moist now to scout properly, because yeah, the your opponents could be doing anything. This guy's going triple barracks. 
He's basically looking like he's going to do some type of weird fucking timing. The one thing I would tell Moist right now is his third is, uh, or no, no, it's not. His third's fine. His third's actually fine. Yeah, it's fine. Never mind. <coughs> For some reason, I thought he was already fully saturated. I was like, wait, what the fuck's going on? So what has he scouted so far? That's a mistake right there. He scouted up to the edge of the gas and didn't progress. He actually doesn't know if this guy expanded or not. That's a mistake. Is uh, the queen build still good against bio? Yeah. The one thing I would tell you so far that's happened is uh, your overlord skirted the natural, but didn't actually scout the natural. So you, you would actually, he could be one basic you for all you know. Okay. There you go, good job. You don't have to sack it though if you don't want to, but it is good to set it around this time, so it's not bad. I would actually, you know, I like that you're doing it. You didn't see anything, so you're pulling out. That's very good. And a good thing, too, about getting your Overlord killed like this is even if you don't see his buildings, looking at his army tells you everything anyways. You can just go, wow, that's a, like, you have, like, fucking 16 Marines and 2 Marauders. I wonder how much shit you have. Well, there it is right there. And against Bio, you can try this if you want. This is something I'm starting to try to do on my stream, and I'm gonna fuck around with it more. But I'm going Ling Bane into Hydra, and I go Triple Evo. So I just go Ling Bane Hydra. I, I've always had trouble with Ling Bane. Okay. I don't know if it's just my efficiency of my fight, or or something. But it seems like I never have enough. Okay. Well, the more marine, the more bio he has, and the less tanks he has, the more bailings you should make for sure. Like if he's got like ten tanks, I would not recommend going mass bailing. But if he's got like one tank or two tanks or even no tanks, you should make like probably half of your army is bailing, or like a third of it at least.
There's only one thing you want to be careful of if you do a style like this. Oh, never mind, you're going Rush Ravager. Never mind, sorry. I, for some reason, in my mind, I thought you were going Ling Bane Hydra. But you're going Rush Ravager, no, you're fine. Well, my transition is going to be Ling or Hydra um, Roach and Testers into uh, the Lords. <coughs> sorry. It works. It can work. <coughs> And I just double I would say uh, a better way to play this style nowadays, you don't need fungal as much now because you can't, the, the reason why you needed fungal before is because you wanted to fungal a tank before it got picked up by a medevac and then you would curse and violet. But you can't do that anymore as Terran. You can't load up tanks and medevacs anymore. So... Instead of going on Festers, it's actually, it would be with your better interest to go Viper faster. Because if you run through a bunch of tanks now, you are going to get fucking destroyed. The Festers or not, it'll still, it'll destroy your Ruby. It's, yeah, that sucks, man. I'm kind of glad that it happened, though, in terms of you seeing that game, because uh, that's actually a huge point. Uh, if you go, if you want to go Roach Ravager against Bio now, instead of going Infester, for sure, go Viper first, and then Vipers now will blinding cloud the tanks rather than fungling them, because fungling them is pointless nowadays because they can't move them. Like well, as soon as they're siege, they're stuck. And instead what you would do is you would blinding cloud the tanks and then you would just fucking fight the bio straight up if the bio's blocking your path. As long as the blinding clouds are keep being applied, you can continue to fight it. And if you're within range, you can try to like corrosive bile a tank underneath the blinding cloud, that would totally work. But if he's not allowing you to really get on the tanks, just blinding cloud his tanks, kill some bio, and then just back up, refresh your viper, do it again. <coughs> yeah, so that was just misclicking. It's all good. It's all good, man. This new patch is uh, changing a lot of shit about the game, so it's all good, dude. It's making everything confusing again. Uh, one more or no? Are we, what are we done? Uh, what do you want to do? We've been going for an hour and 40 minutes. But I love you, so I don't mind. If you want to go one um, more, we can do one more. No, we're good. I'm good. I've taken up most of your time. It's all good, man. I uh, I don't mind going. It, it doesn't bother me at, at all. If if it was someone that it bothered me with doing like a fucking like two hour coaching lesson for a one hour paid, I would be like, no, we should probably stop. But you've already, dude, you supported my stream so fucking much that I don't give a shit if we do a two hour coaching lesson. It's fine. All right, uh, one more and then we'll be good. I just that last game was horrendous for me. All right, that's fine. Do you want to play the same guy? I. Uh, You can just make the game again, I guess. He's still at the party. Yeah. You just change those maps. That's all good. <clears throat> and uh, SPK StarCraft, do you want me to give you any advice or no? Because you're not obviously getting coached. I don't know if you want that. But if you do, just let me know and I can offer you some tips as well, if you're interested. But overall, your uh, your build is it's interesting. <laughs> you know, it's weird, because I made a Hydra Den, and I didn't make a single Hydra. And I've been winning against Terrans with Hydra leading investors. And then if they go bio, I add in Banes. Yeah. But I just completely ignored it. Yeah. <coughs> it's all good, man. I was talking to you as well, which is a little distracting. All right. 
SBK, I'll tell you after this game. I'll uh, I'll give you both a little bit of a, a piece of my mind, and then you can do with it what you will. But I think I, I see a pull in your build, SBK, which uh, I would tell I'll tell you about. Till my head to the side, I'm digging deep in my nose. Yeah, baby. Really get those boogers out. Now, I, I have like no boogers in my nose. It's more just like slime. And I'm just trying to like wipe everything away after I blow my nose. Every time I blow my nose, though, there is a surprising amount that comes out. I'm just like, how? How does there keep being that much? It doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense, motherfucker. Livy might be being murdered. I can hear her. No, no, she's fucking loud. She's getting really loud because she's drinking. What? Sorry. She's not being murdered. If she was being murdered, I would go save her. I would go blow my nose in the murderer's face and then punch him in my snot in his eyes. Kill shot. Alright, so we got saturated, saturated, the third base is coming up. This is when he should be making links. He should have already made it. He should actually should have already made some links. This is too greedy. If this guy were to make like four hillions run by, he would die. Or he would just take a lot of damage. Just a quick tip, um, once you get fully saturated on two bases, with the new ways Terran plays, always, even if it's bio or, hell, or uh, whatever, just make up to 16 legs as soon as you're saturated on two mineral lines. If you would have harassed you with like four Hellions, uh, that could have fucked you pretty hard. Okay.
If you can, if you're ever in a turn base like this, and they're going bio, and you see that uh, it's early game like this, and you see the tech lab on a barracks getting researched, that's your main target you should always go for. Like, if you have to fight the marines, you have to fight the marines, but yeah. The first time you came in, if you went right for that tech lab, you could deny stick back. It's really rare to have that kind of shit happen, but if it ever does, that's definitely what you should go for. Because it would make your follow-up timing when you do do it, he won't have stim pack to defend it. Because that's a fucking long upgrade. So what kind of units are you going to go for in this game, Waste? Roach Hydra? I can lift through this push. Make sure you throw down uh, some Evos. If you have this much gas going, uh, I would recommend throwing some Evos down a little earlier. Because you have a good economy. And then also, I would say take this Onaga Tower. Try to always have this Onaga Tower taken so you can have some type of... So, uh, I think one big mistake that just happened uh, is the fourth base was going to get denied regardless. You were, like, your plan was to cancel it. If that's going to happen, honestly just let it die and don't take a fight off creep. Taking that fight off creep almost lost you the game right there. Because if, if you're not going to defend that ground uh, for a purpose, there's no point to take the fight there. You actually, it just benefits him more uh, if you fight off creep. Now this one should go way better for you if you uh, if he ends up going committing. <coughs> the only time you should ever fight a Terran off creep is if you think you have the lead by like quite a bit, and if you have something that doesn't need creep, like for instance, Mutas would be an ideal unit. Like if you could have Mutas picking apart the rallies while League Maid runs him down. Then that's fine. This fight right here, I don't know if I would take it.
Because if you take a fight like that, like your plan is you want to go Roach Hydra, but every time you do a fight like that, you're delaying what you're going to go into. Because you have to remake more Lagos and Banes. I would just, if I were you right now, I would just be like poking around the map, maybe with little tiny sections of my army, and you could maybe try to run into his natural with the piece of your army, try to run into his third, rather than trying to force a fight all the time. When there's a fight, you honestly want to make him fight you on creep. You don't want it to be the other way around. You don't want to be taking fights off creep. That's going to make you fucking lose all the time. But if, if while you're not taking fights, you're like, well, I want to do something. What you're doing right now, attempting to run around the map. Like, he just realized, oh shit, there's like probably three tanks over there. And again, I would not go in Festers before uh, Viper against Tank anymore. The Tanks are what's really going to be fucking you up. Because you already have Banelings to kill the the bio. And if you get Infestors, it's, it's overlapping with what the Banelings are supposed to be doing. But if you don't have some way to shut the Tanks down, they're going to kill everything before you really get into his face anyways. You might be able to get a good fungal with your burrow, possibly. Not bad. That was lucky. Yeah. And so another thing too is if you ever want to go on festers as well, always get Neural Parasite. If you if you ever do this before Viper, get Neural Parasite. Because the thing that's going to fuck you over is tanks. If he picks you apart with that shit, you're going to take so much damage. I think the big mistake he made right there was he didn't actually control this Alora Tower. So he didn't actually see what was coming on the sides of him. You should just be willing to accept that it's a split map scenario and harassing rather than full on committing. Because when you do that, you take bad trades. Like if you crush his army in like a decisive victory and you're like, well I fucking smashed him, He's there's no way he can hold my follow up, then yes, you could totally attack across the map and finish the game. But this Terran is definitely not behind. Uh, you had one fight where it was like you lost everything, and you, you killed everything of his, but you almost lost everything of your own. And before that, he was breaking your army down over and over. So it should definitely uh, chip away at him before you really commit. Or tech to something stronger, like you are.
lost. Yeah, that's gonna be really hard though, because now you can't use the corrupter. Really. It's all good, man. Try not to get frustrated. Just uh, take it as like learning experiences. Um, the big thing you have to respect is tanks. Yeah. I'm not yeah. used to them being so powerful. Yeah. The tanks fucking one-shot Zerglings and two-shot Hydras. And if you have ten of them in the back just fucking railing you, you're going to lose your whole army pretty fast. And they splash as well. So it's not even just like one unit at a time dies. It's like clumps of units are dying. Uh, and the way shit in StarCraft 2 stacks so hard, like, you're gonna be, like, one fucking tank shot could kill, like, eight Zerglings. Oh, man. <coughs> <coughs> I stayed on Ling Bang too long. I should have had, I should have been going higher and checking out that. Yeah, I also think that the big thing, the, the big mistakes you made that game were, you, I feel like you get really impatient when nothing's going on, and you feel like you have to attack. And you really don't. Like, you, you, you can harass, but you don't have to commit everything. You have to remember, there's a golden rule for Zerg, and you keep breaking it. It's never... If you go for a ground-based army, never take a fight off creep, if you can help it. Never. Okay. Like, what your game plan should be, every single game, should be... Okay, my opponent's not attacking me, so... Let me think about one of the most cost-efficient ways I can attack him, without full-on just engaging him off creep. Maybe that's going to mean you knight as his main. Maybe that means you run, do run buys at his third and his main, or some bullshit. You just do run buys all over the place, and you just keep throwing like ten to twenty supply around the map, all, like just attacking him again and again and again, trying to kill workers or economy, making him feel like he has to all in you. And also, all all the meanwhile, you're spreading the creep closer and closer and closer to his base. Yeah. Because if you take fights off creep, your army becomes like half efficient. If you're going for a ground based style. Especially if it has, especially something with bane lane focused. It's that's a very melee centric unit, and if your units if your bane lanes are getting kited and getting killed before they really connect, that unit it becomes fucking terrible. It becomes way less efficient than it could be. So yeah, just just remember that. Try never to take fights with against Terran specifically off creep, ever. If you can help it. Yeah, I just I need to be more patient. Yeah. It's between stutter, step, uh, stutter stepping and wanting to take an engagement. Um, yeah. I'm passive in the sense of getting to <coughs> and wanting to go destroy, but I can't do that as Zerg. You can always split your army as well. Like, you can just practice doing it in something that's really basic. Like, make two control groups. And don't even put your entire army in these control groups. Just have, like... Uh, one could be your main army, all of it, even. And then two could be your harass number one, and three could be harass number two, or some shit like that. And then you could just have, like, group two go to the bottom, group three go to the top. And it's, like, 30 links in each one, or something like that. And then if they both... Yeah, if, if, if they die, then they die. If he's really, really, really defensive and he's not taking any fucking damage, you could be like, okay, maybe I'll try Adnitus with this next one. And Adnitus is made. The bigger the bigger the map gets spread out, the more likely you're gonna find places to do damage. Okay. And then if you it, or go, ahead. go ahead. No you go. It seems like this map pool is more of in the center there should be there's a lot of choke points though. So that spreading out is I'm gonna have to go through this choke point either way to get across the map, and that's where usually a town will be in a split map situation. Yeah. Well for instance, there's three pathways on that last map we just played. There's a top path, a middle path, and a bottom path. And your, your army kept running against his in the middle path, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If there was like a couple times throughout that game, if you would have just ran across the very top or the very bottom and ran around, you could have done a lot of damage to his natural and his third. Okay. Yeah, I just get tunnel vision. Because you only really want to be taking a, a full-on engagement if you have a superior army to him. And you, should, you should never think, oh, I have a superior army. If you're never able to break him, and you know he's probably maxed now, and you're still on low-tech units, you're, you should honestly be like, well, fuck, this sucks for me. You should have been preparing for something else before that even happens, like teching harder or something. 
It's really the only time I should be pushing, pushing across the map off creep is uh, when I have brood lords or a tier three unit. But not it's not always. Out. You should only be pushing off the map or off the creep again across the map if you either a just defended an attack and fucking crushed it, and now you're like, well, I can win the game now, probably, or I can do some major damage to you back at your base. That's one situation. Another would be uh, if you have.